As winter approaches, many people in Boston have to worry about the cost of home heating. It's expected the costs will be getting higher, especially for oil. But there's a good deal of uncertainty about this year's supply of fuel assistance. Our guest is from the agency that handles fuel assistance in the Boston area. We'd like to welcome the Energy Programs Manager for ABCD, Kathy Tobin. Thank you very much for being with us, Kathy. Nice to see you. First of all, talk about the price of uh, fuel this year. What's the outlook exactly? It's not good, Chris. We just heard from the um, a few weeks ago from the National Energy Office that it's going up projectedly at uh, up to 8%. That means more than $200 for, per household for the winter. Now, for some people, uh, $200 over winter is not so bad, but a lot of your customers are people uh, for whom this would be a pretty big deal. Absolutely, because even at today's prices, which you're looking at $379 a gallon, with this increase, we're talking more than $4 a gallon, and that's going to hurt everybody. Another thing here is uh, the number of people looking for this fuel assistance. If it stayed the same every year, I suppose it wouldn't be so bad, but that's not what's happening. Well, what's been happening over the past three years for a multiple of different reasons is we've had an increase in the number of applicants from our area, which is Boston, Brooklyn, and Newton, as well as the entire state. We're up more than... 30% over the past three years. So what's the outlook on funding f for assistance from Washington? Well, that's a good question, and, and we're in limbo at the moment now. We're calling on HHS, Health and Human Services, in Washington to release the money. The program is supposed to start November 1st, and we have yet to hear how much money will be coming to the state of Massachusetts. We're not able to alert vendors. We're not sitting in a very good position to be able to get people who the utilities have shut off during the spring to get them turned back on. We're in no position to be able to prevent shutoff. So we're, we're in a pretty tough position right now because we need HHS to release a fully funded LIHEAP fuel assistance program, which is at $5.1 billion, and it needs to happen now. Explain how this works about people who uh, are worried about their utilities being shut off. Well, what happens is we can commit some of their fuel assistance benefit or all of their fuel assistance benefit toward their arrearage to get them turned back on, and that would satisfy the utilities. And that's what we need to do. Come November 15th, there is a moratorium on for those who do have a financial hardship that they will not be turned off. But they won't be able to get turned back on unless monies can go towards their heating bill. So what's the holdup? We've heard a lot of talk coming out of Washington about cutting back on things that are maybe very popular and needed, but is this maybe one more casualty in a way? It, it is a casualty. It's actually a crisis for us right now, and we don't know what the holdup is because this program historically always starts on November 1st. We need to start sending notices today. So we're already behind the eight ball. So are the vendors who will be delivering oil or who we would like to deliver oil. And, and, and the utility customers are also going to be in dire straits if we're not able to make commitments to be able to turn their utilities back on or to prevent a shutoff. So that's why we really need HHS to release a fully funded LIHE program at $5.1 billion. And we can't take a little bit here and a little bit there. It's got to come now because the winter is approaching. Now tell me about the, the, the brinksmanship involved with, with the vendors because uh, you can have them uh, deliver some oil and you find out later you don't have enough money to pay all of them from Washington. I guess then maybe you put the squeeze on, who knows, the governor or some private foundations? or Anybody who would like to help those who, who are having a difficult time heating their homes, we reach out to uh, all of those sources. So in the meantime, what about people who need this assistance? Should they hold back or should they just uh, take the usual steps on the usual schedule? I think everybody needs to take the usual steps. They need to apply. They need to know where they are. We've been processing applications since August. We've received over 14,000 applications. We're ready to go. Now we need the funding to go behind the program. As far as eligibility, what should people be um, conscious of as far as being able to, as far as the income, for example? Right. Well, I'll give you two examples. A household of one, we look at the gross yearly income and we go by the state median income. So a, a household of one can't earn more than $31,000 
in a household of four is $60,000. So the next step for people, if they do want to apply, uh, what's the best way to do that, to call or go online? Yeah, either one. Uh, if they call us at 617-357-6012, we can put them in touch with a site in their neighborhood. We take applications directly at the central office at 178 Tremont Street in Boston, and they can go on to our website, which is www bostonabcd.org. By the way, you also still help with uh, weatherization to keep the costs we of fuel do. down? We do. We, we absolutely do. And thanks for asking because that is a huge help in saving those, those dollars that seem to be dwindling for assistance. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Chris. From ABCD, Kathy Tobin. Up ahead, sports with Pat Flaherty.